Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and to a new edition of our online interview series. Today, we want to talk for the first time with First Tin, a London listed company, also London based. Yes, my, my pleasure. Uh, yeah, First Tin is a junior tin mine developer. We listed 8th of April in London, uh, and in our portfolio, we have two very, very advanced, very, very mature projects. One in Tellerhäuser in Germany, former East Germany, about 250 kilometers south of Berlin, and another one in Australia, about four hours drive south of Brisbane, mm -hmm. our project Taronga. Both are in scoping or with a previsibility status, and we are going to develop them further into investment ready. Super. So that means you want to do a production decision. That means you want to really build those two projects, you want to bring the mines in production? We want to bring both mines first, first step into <laughs> investment ready, yeah. and thereafter taking the decision uh, to get them in production, to construct and to commission the two mines in Germany and in Australia. Yes. Okay, super. Before we come to your two projects, maybe some words on the global tin market, because we are not talking about zinc, we talk about Tin and uh, tin is a yeah quite a small market, but really critical, right? Tin is a critical raw material in the U.S. as well as in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, the major application case uh, for tin is solder, so more than fifty percent of the total tin production, which is in the range of three hundred eighty thousand tons annually, ends up as solder. What means solder? Solder is simply the glue that joins together every electrical connection. So if, mm -hmm. we, if we talk about electromobility, we need to think tin. If we talk about renewable energy, we need to say tin. And if we talk even more about microelectronics, so mm -hmm. all our mobile phones, PCs, handhelds, you name it, we need to say tin as well. Why I'm saying that so much, it is as well the most forgotten metal mm -hmm. in that kind of electrical revolution. So tin, because of its small volumes that it is in every product in, it's a kind of a spice metal, if you like it. It's a forgotten one as well as the spice metal, but without tin, no electrical connection. Absolutely. And what is really interesting is, I mean, the price uh, per ton came down from around $47,000 per ton today to $27,000 per ton. And also, if we look like we have only like uh, four or five days in official storages uh, of tin, which is like 4,000 tons, what I saw in your presentation. And uh, we have, uh, we are since two years in a deficit and also have years ahead of us in deficit. So why went the tin price so significantly down? That makes no sense to me. We have today is 300,000 tons out of mine, so-called primary production, and 80,000 tons out of recycling. So the 100,000 tons means we need to put one third more than we have today out of mines. Mm -hmm. While there are only projects that are identified by the ITA that are mature enough to come into production, to enter mm -hmm. in production until 2030, that represent 55,000 tons annual production, which means nothing else. Tin is a scarce metal and will remain scarce. Uh, and looking uh, at the initially cited uh, inventory, so Actually, we have uh, something like 7,000 tons of indium in the warehouses, which represents seven days of worldwide mm -hmm. consumption. So the inventory level is still very, very small. And the inventory development doesn't go parallel with the price development. So actually, the price development is completely independent from every uh, um, uh, inventory level is still scarce, so consumption, mm -hmm. demand is still high, and even more uh, Chinese uh, officials uh, talked to the market and said that they will stop a number of smelters. And like in every other commodity, China represents a big stake uh, of the total tin production. They will go into maintenance, mm -hmm. which means nothing else than on short term, tin might become even scarcer than it is. 
I can't see today a real lower demand which drives prices down. So this has nothing to do with each other. Mm -hmm. I expect rather it goes in parallel with most other industrial metals where the prices as well declined during the course of the last few days and weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, finally, if when you want to produce an end product, you need uh, the raw material and you cannot rely on the future because that's only paper. <laughs> okay, super. Let's talk about Tellerhäuser in Saxony in Germany. You did a scoping study there already with, uh, I would say, quite favorable numbers um, despite the uh, inflationary tendencies, but still like a $50 million startup capex, uh, $264 million uh, NPV and the C1 costs uh, for tin at tw around $12,000 to $12,500 per ton. I think this is extremely favorable, right? This is a very favorable product uh, uh, project. Um, and uh, as well, look, I come from this region here, so it's like uh, coming home. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the region as well is very mining friendly. It is as advanced that we already started into the um, application uh, to get a permit to construct and to operate the mine. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. I saw also in your presentation that we are talking here about indium and you already touched on indium because uh, it, it, one might think with 17.2 tons per annum, that's, oh, that's like nothing, but the indium price is all, almost half a million dollars per ton. So this is really significant byproduct. Um, where do, do you see more upside also in the indium or how did you come on that? And do you see more, let's say, exploration potential for that? Um, let's start with the last part uh, of the question. Yes, there is more exploration uh, potential for indium mm -hmm. because not for all drills, not for all cores that uh, have been drilled in the past, we have really indium analyzes indium assays. That's the reason as well why there is no resource stadium, uh, st uh, status for indium. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we have looked into our processing flow charts where the indium ends up. Uh, and how to recover the indium that looks very, very promising to translate it into an intermediate, into a product out of the mine, uh, which makes it feasible uh, to fit into further downstream processing. And for indium in general, our Tellerhäuser project is a so-called world-class resource for indium. And the free world outside China, uh, at least, is arguing and looking desperately for mm -hmm. indium because for indium, China delivers about 85% of the today's worldwide mm -hmm. supply. So additional suppliers are very welcome uh, from everywhere in order to secure the raw material supply. Absolutely. And you are sitting in the heart of Europe. So that's, that's, that's true. In front of the door. That's great. <laughs> Super. When I look at your Tellerhäuser project, so I get the impression that you could do maybe in the future then also like a hub and spoke strategy. Uh, we look on that as a hub and spoke. So because mm -hmm. adjacent to Tellerhäuser, we have a number of uh, uh, exploration licenses where we as well, for one of them, uh, we already have a chalk compliant resource statement for Grottersburg. Mm -hmm. And yes, we uh, take into account and looking onto the Tellerhäuser project to make it able uh, to use it as a hub and spoke. So to have the processing plant within our Tellerhäuser mine. And then in the second uh, part of the 2020s, uh, where we plan uh, to uh, develop and get into production uh, maybe a second or a third mine in the closer vicinity, then to deliver the pre-concentrated ore from these later mines towards our processing plant in Tellerhäuser to use it as a hub and spoke and to concentrate the further downstream processing in one, which will make the projects even more profitable. So, uh, end of next year, beginning uh, of uh, 2024, we will start into the construction uh, to make it happen to start production of Tellerhäuser and Taronga during the course of 2025. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the, that's the tight, uh, mm -hmm. challenging, um, but manageable timeline and the schedule that we have, yes. 
Okay, super. Let's talk about Taronga in Australia. You said it already. It's south of Brisbane. I have been there already, not at your project, but I've been down there. Very interesting um, um, area, I must say. Very well developed also. And uh, you guys have the fifth largest undeveloped teen reserve globally there. How did you came on that? That's fantastic. We, we acquired the project uh, yeah. from our, from my today's biggest shareholder, from Austin, mm -hmm. an ASX listed company, and they sold it because they decided to focus on to, to concentrate on two other projects. Mm -hmm. uh, the project has a very long history, so it has been uh, explored already by uh, such names like BHP, Uh, at Newmont. Uh, Newmont even did a previsibility study in the 80s. And then the development stopped more or less uh, with the crash uh, of the International Tin Council at the beginning of the 90s, um, while uh, Austin then prepared a previsibility study, an mm -hmm. updated previsibility study during the course of the 2010s. That's the the base uh, that we took over. Uh, mm -hmm. It has a very, very good, very, very simple mineralogy. This is really mm -hmm. a pro for that project. It has a, a perfect shape for a future open pit. It has a V shape on top of the hill. That's the perfect setup, like you said as well, in still good developed region of uh, Australia. That means uh, infrastructure is just next door and makes as well that case very cheap in investment. So we don't need to spend millions of dollars mm -hmm. to construct infrastructure, electricity, mm -hmm. road work is just around the corner, it's just next door. That is really mm -hmm. very beneficial very promising for our Taronga project. Okay, super. What else do you have to do? Because I see your, your York resource estimate is from 2012, and it's for tin only. So what other metals uh, do you expect? Like, do you have maybe also indium in there? Um, and uh, what else do you have to do then, um, as this is a 10-year-old estimate? Do you have to do some twin holes? Do you have to verify some stuff? Please explain. Uh, we will do some twin trailing, uh, and we will start uh, in August uh, with that. Why we need to do twin trailing? Uh, uh, most of the exploration has been done by BHP and Newmont, mm -hmm. and the trail cores are not anymore there. So in order to uh, make bank able the visibility study that we are doing, we have to drill uh, some twins, and we are going to do so as well. We will put some drill holes to look if we can connect to today's two parts of the ore body that might be beneficial and accretive to the resource statement like we have today. So that's, uh, and we will do that uh, as well during the course of this year. And let's, let's see uh, what we will find there, mm -hmm. if it will remain promising or not. So that's mm -hmm. pure exploration. Uh, I would mm -hmm. be, be remain there a bit conservative for the Great Britain part, mm -hmm. not for Taronga. There we are really uh, on safe ground. Mm -hmm. What other metals do you have out of the tin space? Uh, for, for, for Taronga, uh, we have uh, a, a, a copper and silver uh, as well. Copper and silver. In the Taronga mm -hmm. ore body with an in-ground value of about 100 million, 180 million US dollars, mm -hmm. which has not been taken into account for the profitability calculation mm -hmm. uh, uh, that we have done based uh, on the CPR based for the prospectus. Okay, so, so that means that leaves uh, some room for positive surprises. That, that leaves yeah. some upside <laughs> potential indeed, uh, and as well the processing plan, so there's yeah. The, the flow chart for the processing already foresees uh, mm -hmm. to float the sulfide con, and the sulfide con is the copper silver containing concentrate. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Um, so that means for me, your strategy is quite clear as you are writing in your presentation build two mines in five years on the path to 6,000 to 10,000 tons per annum tin production. And uh, it looks like the market really needs your tin then. Uh, the market uh, needs the tin, uh, definitely needs as well our tin, which is will become ESG conform and mm -hmm. conflict free because uh, Australia and Germany are really good jurisdictions. We will as well 
uh, fulfill all the ESG credentials for our two future mines, and Taronga and Tellerhäuser uh, will become good to deliver uh, each of them three, three and a half thousand tons, so six and a half to seven thousand tons of tin will come, will be delivered from Taronga and for Tellerhäuser mm -hmm. and the remaining part up to 10. Then in the second half of the 2020s by maybe one or two adjacent mm -hmm. projects uh, to Tellerhäuser and Taronga, both of them uh, potentially as a hub and spoke. So the, the hub uh, with Taronga and Tellerhäuser mm -hmm. and the spoke then with the adjacent all bodies to push the production mm -hmm. then until 2030 towards 10,000 tons of indium from first tin. Uh, 10,000 tons of tin. Of tin, tin, sorry. Yeah, 10, tons indium, tons that would be gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that would most probably by far too much. Uh, yes, yeah. indeed, uh, 10,000 tons of, of, uh, of uh, tin. tin yeah. uh, and okay. a few tons annually of indium from yeah. So uh, Baker Steel is also a big shareholder, and that's, I think, a big sign of confidence. Yes, let, let's start with the shareholders. I'm, I'm happy uh, that uh, we managed to attract uh, uh, those uh, uh, very good shareholders like, for instance, Baker Steel uh, and others, uh, and all of them did uh, a due diligence. So that's, mm. that's as well, I would say, a proof of concept that uh, we did the right thing so far, and I'm very proud uh, that they uh, successfully uh, finished the, the, the due diligences and as well uh, trust us because they invested into us, into our projects. Uh, yes, uh, we raised 20 million pounds, and that's enough money to finance first TIN uh, to realize now within the next 18 to 24 months, five work streams, uh, two work streams, one in Tellerhäuser and one in Taronga are the permitting procedures. Mm -hmm. So to come from today's status into having a permit to construct and uh, uh, to, to run at least uh, to commission and to operate a mine. That's two work streams. Two other work streams are uh, for each of the projects, a bank able visibility study, one for Tellerhäuser, one for Taronga. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, uh, like I mentioned as well, we will do some further drilling, some explorational mm -hmm. in Tellerhäuser and uh, the adjacent ore bodies, as well as some twinning for Taronga and some exploration in uh, one of the close by ore bodies called Great Britain. So all of that we will do within the next 18 to 24 months. Uh, and that uh, we can finance uh, with the money with the equity we raised uh, um, with our, uh, in parallel to our IPO. Super, perfect. Thomas, thank you very much. Wish you all the best. Uh, please go forward as uh, we were talking here. And I have a very good feeling that we talk quite soon. And yeah, please develop both minds into production because the world needs your tin and especially also the Indium. Thank you. Super. Thank you very much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Thomas Binger, the CEO of First Tin. And yeah, you heard it. Two great projects, one in Germany, one in Australia, super safe jurisdictions, uh, ESG fully um, yeah, complying and uh, will be all fulfilled also then with the, pro with the hopefully production scenario. And the company goes really on high speed on full throttle over the next 18 months, maybe 24 months to really do the production decision here and to bring bankable feasibility studies. They have enough money to do so. This is in those times really, really important to have the money. And uh, I think uh, you really should consider this fantastic stock because the stock is quite uh, cheap and uh, I will definitely get the stock here after the interview, that is for sure and I really advise you to have a very, very close look on first hint.